So I really struggled the last, say, two or three days. Um, I got pretty stuck, and it was a pretty frustrating experience, but that's how these things go. Um, I decided to turn on my uh, fish, turn on his, uh, his mouth. So there's our fish, and I call it um, a gullet which essentially is just kind of the inside of his mouth is kind of the idea there. So let me um, move, remove his, his mouth a little bit so you can see inside there. So you can see a red spot inside the guy's mouth with the idea being that would be a collider. And when that inside of his mouth comes in contact with a plant, well, then the plant gets eaten. Um, so it sounds easy enough. Maybe should have been easy enough, but man, I really struggle with it. Um, and I, I think a big part of the problem was trying to think, because um, I have a collider on the fish, um, on the main fish um, object here at the top, the parent object, so that when he bangs into other fish and things, it you know will kind of bounce off them a little bit. Um, but then I needed to have a different collider on the gullet that, um, for the mouth, when it comes in contact with the plant, it'll react to that, and. Um, for whatever reason, as I did it, the plant uh, or the uh, the gullet never seemed to hit the collider um, when it ran across a plant. So uh, really frustrating that was. Um, I've since, after a couple days beating my head against the wall, doing trying to do research, I'm feeling frustrated that uh, I didn't really find tutorials much on YouTube that really talked about any complicated kind of um, any complicated kind of collisions uh, or, or, or objects that had multiple colliders on different parts of a body and like how do how do you do that and can children objects have colliders that even work and um so i thought maybe my my whole approach was wrong i had to change um it, well it turns out the code that i was using um this is very embarrassing but it uh <laughs> finally dawned on me uh, I was doing a Google search on Collider and saw that, um, like, what was I doing a search on? Um, yeah, I was on Trigger Enter, I think. And um, when I did the Google search, one of the options uh, the lower in the list was on Trigger Enter 2D. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have, like, I've got on Trigger Enter on the gullet script and not on Trigger, um, on Trigger Enter 2D. So sure enough, I changed it to that, and then I'm getting uh, results. If you can see in the the, uh, the console there, I'm at least getting a message saying that the gullet came in contact with uh, with something. So, uh, all right. So that was uh, that was a frustrating time, but um, turns out it was like a, a silly little thing like that, which is usually the case. But when you're in those moments and you're feeling frustrated at why it's not working, and it just it looks like it should be working and it's not, and you're just like, where do I go? What do I do? How am I gonna ever figure this out? I'm sorry to think, who can I send this to to take a look at for me to show me where my mistake is? Because it was just making no sense to me. And it ended up being something ridiculously uh, simple like that. So anyway, enough of me rambling, but I thought I'd tell that story of the discouragement of a development. And then, um, and man, it affects, it affects my whole life. I was like just feeling blah and like everything. Just frustrated that it was in the back of my mind. I kept thinking, why can't I get this thing to work? Then once once it's figured out, once it's working, such a relief, such a positive feeling. Once I got the mouth collider working, my next step was to, um, when the mouth would make contact with a plant, to have the plant object destroyed as if it had been eaten. So I tried that here, and at first glance, it looked like it was working correctly. But um, if you watch this, you'll notice that if a fish eats the bottommost plant of a stalk, the whole stalk disappears because as I was creating the stalks, I decided I would, there's one there. So look for the bottom of the stalks to get eaten. The entire stalk disappears when the bottom gets eaten. And um, that's because each subsequent leaf is the child of the stalk below it. So the bottom most, uh, leaves are the parents 
So if the parent object is destroyed, everything that's a child of it is destroyed as well. So um, a silly mistake. Funny the result is what it is. That the whole stalk disappears like that. I think I can fix it easily if I just make each plant uh, be not the parent of the stalk. Even though I'm using the parent stalk as the locator for where it's going to grow from, I don't need to make it attached to it as a, as a child object. So I'm going to make that change now. See if that fixes our, our problem here. All right, so I changed the um, scheme so the new plant is not a child of the game object of its parent. So we'll see if that helps here. What we want to have happen is be able, for a fish to be able to swim through the middle of a vine, eat the leaves in the middle of the vine without it destroying everything above it. It can eat the bottom, it can eat the bottom leaf and it doesn't like wipe out the whole vine. I think we're seeing that. It's able to eat just a, a section out of the middle or even the bottom without it destroying everything. So I think we're in good shape here. My latest change is um, about how the fish is going to eat the leaves. Decided to go with the fish will kind of like eat the leaf a little bit at a time and the longer the fish make contact with the leaf the more of the leaf it can eat. And as it eats the leaf the leaf's just going to shrink in size as opposed to actual bites taken out of the leaf. I uh, figure that probably is sufficient. But, um, and also I've, I've modified it so Instead of the fish all just turning slowly to the left, now there's a random, some going to be some random motion about which direction they tend to turn. So here we have the leaves put back in. They're growing way too fast just to get enough out there to make it interesting. The fish are being populated. And um, surprise, there's not enough leaves on there. So my initial plant count was like 10 or something. So here we have the initial plant count of, of 15. Let's see if these fish are going to eat these plants okay. If you watch an impact, you should see the plant. The leaf will kind of shrink inside as a fish nibbles it away. So I think I like that effect. That way even a little fish can eat off of a big leaf. So next I'm going to try to work on having the um, some kind of a start the energy system where if the leaves have energy, the fish, when they eat a leaf, will gain some of that energy. And then um, as the fish swims, it burns up energy to see how that goes. So um, I'm realizing as I do this, that every new feature I add, there's as like, you know, two, three, four, five different parameters to kind of establish the world and the, how these things work. So I can imagine as this thing finishes up, just so many different parameters I can tweak um, the values of to get different performance so um, that's when it kind of gets fun if you ask me um, once you get the engine built then to tweak it to make it work the way you want it to so I made a few changes here um, for one I've changed the way the plants grow before they were just kind of growing the same kind of like s scale rate every kind of growth step um, but I realized that it was uh, strange proportionally, so I decided to change this, the way the growth so it's more um, where the plants grow by like a constant amount of area every growth step rather than kind of a, a constant width change, for instance. So um, not sure how critical that is, but I became obsessed with it. So that's what I did. Um, I've also, um, you can see the fish are now different. Um, I've change them so they have some randomness in terms of the scale of how they are. So at this point, a fish can be, um, the length of it can be um, half to two, a range of, uh, of a half to two times the, uh, the, this, the, the width rate. So if a fish is, uh, has a scale, a scale of one, one by one, they'll be kind of like, it's kind of normal looking what my fish has been before. Uh, these long fish here probably have a scale rate closer to uh, the two. And then the little short stubby guys are probably 0.5s or something closer to that. So, um, and I've also added where uh, when the, uh, you can see that when the fish fly, uh, swim over the, uh, the leaves, they take little bites and the leaves get smaller. Um, and also the, um, the fish uh, prefab for each fish is, uh, incrementing some energy value when they eat those fish. So right now they're getting some energy from the fish. They don't actually use up that energy or burn that energy for anything yet. So I need to work on that. 
I also need to like take the uh, the size of the fish and have that uh, related to the mass of the fish because right now if I have a really tiny fish it can bang into a big fish and push the big fish out of the way so that's that looks pretty strange so if I uh, set the mass based on the sizes that should make a big difference so that's what I'm gonna do here next so I thought I'd do one more um, while I was here just to show the um, where we're giving the uh, the size of the fish even more kind of random variety there you might see some little tiny fish it was interesting to see a little tiny fish bang into a big fish. It might sometimes push the big fish out of the way, which is not good. Um, the little tiny fish are about the size that a fish will be when it comes out of its egg. And it will slowly grow over its lifetime. Um, and ultimately, the maximum size that a fish can grow to will be a parameter that's in its genetic code. When these things start um, populating, uh, they start laying eggs, cloning themselves, or... Um, producing like genetically with other fish.